All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. That thrilling story of privateers, shipwreck, and whaling days at sea. Although bad luck has followed our friends of the Paul Parrot ever since they found the rough diamonds on Galto Island, it looks now as though they may just about have everything under control. For even though the Paul Parrot was wrecked on this strange island off the coast of Brazil, all repairs have just about been made by the men under the direction of Captain Dalton. The Indians who menaced our friends have been scattered. Their white leader, Misto, the magician, has gone mad and jumped into the ocean when his black leopard was killed by the jaguar which Johnny Robbins and Sue Grange befriended. Annabelle Wilson is back safe in camp, and Johnny and Sue have recovered the diamonds that Briny stole. Only one problem faces our friends. Now that the Paul Parrot is repaired, how can they get it back into the sea from the rocky ledge where it was beached? As they're worrying over this impossible task, a sail is sighted approaching the island. It soon turns out to be a full-rigged ship, and it's about to drop anchor in the harbor as we pick up our story. Dickon. Dickon, hand me my glass. Aye, sir. That vessel's flying no colors, but there's something about it that's familiar. Aye, aye, Captain. Here's the glass. I think I knows what she means, I does. Throw me down it is. You know what ship that is, Dickon? Strike me, Captain. If these old eyes don't deceive me, it's... It's the Africana. Aye, Dickon, the Africana it is. Captain Dalton, you mean Captain Cosh's privateer ship that we got separated from in that awful storm? Aye, Sue, that's the very same. Captain... If that is the Africana, we may have more trouble on our hands. Whoever's in charge of the rest of the privateer's crew doesn't know that Karsh is dead, and Briny and his men have surrendered. They're liable to start firing on us again. But, Mr. Grange, remember, there are still a lot of our men from the crew of the Paul Parrot on board that ship. Remember, Captain Karsh made them go over there as hostages when he and his men boarded us. Then, when the storm came up and we lost our rudder, neither group could get back to their own ship. Ah, uh, you're right, lad. But I fear Mr. Grange is right. Our men can do little good, most likely, against all the men of their crew that are still on the Africana. Batten down the edge, Captain. If that means we has to fight, what are we standing about gaffing for? That's right, Dickon. If we could defeat half their crew, we ought to be able to whip the other half easy enough. Up to arms, you swabs! Arms! Easy there, Johnny and Dickon. Remember, they have cannon aboard, and we're in their range. They can blow us off the beach. But we'll be ready. Avast, all hands. Aye, aye, sir. Stand by for a skirmish. Aye, aye, Mr. Aye, Wainwright, aye, Mr. Wainwright, issue arms from the powder locker. Aye, aye, sir. Issue arms from the powder locker. Look, there's a boatload of men coming ashore. Lush me to a yard arm, Captain. That's a good sign. That means he wants to parley first. There's somebody in the bow of the boat, Captain, holding up his arm. It looks... It looks like... Stand by, men. Make no show of resistance till we find what they want first. Captain Dalton, don't you know who that is in the boat? It's Mr. Hollings. Hollings? Well, so it is. Salt me down for a mackerel. Hollings was the one who saved the diamonds for us on Galto Island, Captain Dalton. Maybe he can help us again. I, Mr. Grange, have a great deal of faith in that man. When I sent him over on the Africana at the head of our group of hostages, I figured he might be able to throw a reef in the privateer's course. And maybe he's done just as much. Oh, Johnny, just think. Mr. Hollings wasn't even one of us to begin with. He was one of that awful Dirk Briscoe's crew back on Goto Island. And yet he's been such a good friend. Blow me down. It seems you're all doing a lot of pearl counting before you even catch your oysters. Let's wait and see what Hollings has to tell us. They're beaching their boat now. He has some of the other men from our crew that went over to the Africana with him. Blow me down, it's a blinking reunion, it is. Mr. Hollings, it's good to see you again. We <laughs> scarcely thought we'd ever see you or the Africana again after that storm. Oh, Captain Dalton. Mr. Grange. Hello, Johnny and Sue. Well, I'm back all right, and I'll bring you good news. You seem to be in charge of things around here, Hollings. What happened aboard the Africana? Well, Captain, when you sent me over with that party of hostages and give me that long glance, I knew you wanted me to try something. Aye, Hollings, that I did. With your ingenuity, I thought you should be able to spike his gun somehow. Of ass, Captain. It was the storm that came to me aid. When the Paul Parrot and the Africana were separated, the crew on the privateer was on beam ends. Both the captain and the first mate were over on the Paul Parrot. The third mate had died, and the second officer was a man that couldn't have been master of a fishing smack. <laughs> but what did you do, Mr. Hollings? Well, I'll tell you at its highest. And all hands were at wit's end that I started to figure out... Go 
to me, Dodge. Just help me. Uh, I just know what Captain Carr should be wanting me to do in a case like this. Uh, I, I can't see the other ship at all. Don't you know how to navigate, man? Aye, I know. But that is, I, I think I does well enough. But without the captain, it's very distressing for me. Of us, man. You're letting the waves hit us a beam. If you let us sink sidewise into the trough of the waves, we'll be swamped. Give me the wheel. I'll ride it out for you. I, I oughtn't to let you at the wheel. Being you're one of the whalers the captain was about to scuttle. But if you, if you think you can, here. Why? Now hang on. Uh, uh, avast, you fool, avast. You're swinging the wheel hard over. You'll lay her over on her. Well, I guess that did it. When I swung the wheel over hard, the boom from the foremast hit him in the back of the head and felled him like a tree. Ahoy there! You men from the poor parrot! Aye, hey, honey! What are we to do? Uh -huh. Now, here's all that's left to the second mate, thanks to a swinging boom that just laid him low. The crew aboard here is demoralized. It's up to us to keep our heads and take off. Aye, aye. Aye. But how? All right, how? all right, now here. You, you, Rogers and Keatley, creep aft and spike all the cannon. You three get to the arms locker and take what arms you need and stand guard over it. The rest of you capture the cook and stand guard over the galley. Bring me guns. And you four, back me up with rifles. When this blooming privateer crew finds out we've got all the arms, that they've got no leader, and that they don't eat till they do what we say, they'll see our way of it soon enough. <laughs> You mean to say that you and the men with you from our crew took over the Africana as easily as that? Aye, Mr. Grange, that's the way it happened. In fact, we didn't even have as much trouble with them as we expected after the storm died down. There wasn't one left who would navigate a ship well enough to be sure to get them out of their trouble. So when I promised not to report them as pirates, they was ready to follow me and eat out of me hands. Oh, Mr. Hollings, that's wonderful. But how did you get back here and find us on this island? Well, Johnny, that wasn't so easy. We scoured these seas all these days, looking for some trace of the poor parrot. To tell you the truth, I'd almost given up hope when I sighted the smoke from your camp on this island. And a moment later, through the glass, I saw the good ship Paul Parrot herself, resting high and dry on the beach. Ah, good old Paul Parrot! Good old Paul Parrot! Ah! <laughs> Aye, Hullings, all's well that ends well, they say. Aye. But by the way, are you sure the men on the Africana are still with you? They won't try any tricks now when they find out what's happened to their captain and the rest of the crew. Oh, yes, Captain, you can depend on them. Mm. They're behind me strong. Captain, I just thought of something. Remember you and Mr. Grange and Dickens said you were worried about getting the Paul Parrot back down into the sea again? Aye, lad, but what of it? I still see no way to do it. Now that the Africana's in the harbor, couldn't it pull the Paul Parrot down off the rocky ledge? Ho, 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 Johnny lad. This ain't like hitching a wagon to a blooming horse. Let the Africana pull us off. <laughs> Johnny, you sound like a blooming landlubber. Oh, Johnny's a landlubber. Johnny's a landlubber. Stow that pulp, Parrot. Blow me down, Dickon. There may be something in what the boy says at that. If we construct a long slide from the big trees in the jungle, from the ledge across the beach into the sea, what's to prevent the pulp Parrot from sliding down them? if she had a tug from a line hitched to the Africana? But, Captain, with the Africana in shallow water... She can't get enough wind in her sails to drag us off. Oh, best. Here's where I have good news for you. Among the many fancy trimmings the Africana's got is a little auxiliary steam engine below decks to give her a boost when the wind dies. It ain't a big one, but it's enough to give the poor parrot a boost off the island. Hollings, you've saved the day for us again. Mr. Hollings, you'll receive an ample share of our proceeds from the treasure when we return to New Bedford, I assure you. He surely deserves it, Ezra. Ah, you may later that. Now, hold, hold. Hold fast a moment, Captain. Captain Dalton, you've got a full crew. You don't need me. And now I've got the chance I've always wanted. I've had me first mate's papers for years, but I could never get to be master of a ship. Now, here's the Africana. Kosh owned it, and he's dead. He had no heirs. His only other officer, Briny, he's joined with you, he has. His crew's come to me as a man. Now, look here, Captain Dalton. They'll let me claim salvage on it. The port authorities will grant my claims. And I'll be what I've wanted to be all these years. Master of my own ship. A respectable merchantman skipper. And believe me, that means more to me than all the diamonds you could show me. You're a wise man, Hullings. Aye, there's nothing like being master of a ship. Your own ship. Do as you like, Hullings, and good luck to you. <laughs> but we'll miss you at that, you old sea dog. 
Well, lash me to a yard arm. What are we all standing around like a like a blooming bunch of sentimental landlubbers? We've got work to do, we have. I dick in you old hard shell crab, we have. Step lively, men. Once off that rock ledge, and we're homeward bound. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. Well, Sue, we're heading for home at last. And this time there'll be no more stops. You're so quiet, Johnny. Oh, I'm just thinking. What about? Oh, about seeing Mother and Father again after all these years, and about what's been happening in the Civil War, and about, well, everything. I was awful sorry to see Mr. Hollings leave us, but I guess he knew best. He got what he wanted most, a ship of his own, and that's the most important thing, I think. Well, now, you've got all you want, haven't you, Johnny? I mean, when we get back to New Bedford and Brother Ezra sells the diamonds, we'll all be rich. Yes, Sue, but that's not all. I found something else that I want all my life. More than being rich, even. What's that, Johnny? Hey, bitch, I can answer that, Johnny. I does. Oh, Dickon, I didn't see you come up behind us. And here's Captain Dalton, too. We couldn't help overhearing you, Sue and Johnny. Well, Dickon, what do you think it is I want most? The first, lad, I'm afraid it's the same thing I always wanted. To be on the sea. Is that it, Johnny? Yes, Sue. That's it. I... It's caught you in its spell, too, has it, Johnny? Well, let me tell you this. The seal make a man of you if anything can. And it's helped prove to me that I may look over all the earth and nowhere would I find a better group of shipmates than us four right here. Hi, Captain. You said a wise word. We'll always be good shipmates, I hope. And I hope no matter how many storms we run into, there'll always be enough smooth sailing for us. Rock! Smooth sailing! Smooth sailing! Smooth sailing! Rock! And there they go. Johnny, Sue, Captain Dalton, Paul Parrot himself, and all our friends of the Paul Parrot homeward bound. But they've still got a long ways to go, and there may be many more adventures ahead for all of them on the transcribed cruise of the Paul Parrot. But until we hear from them again, this is your announcer, Dave Ward, wishing all of them smooth sailing and saying goodbye. <laughs>